What is up, guys? Welcome to the Widecast. I am your host, Radoslav. So today we're going to be doing part two of our reading and analysis of Ghislaine Maxwell's defamation testimony, April 2016 defamation testimony from her lawsuit with Virginia Roberts. By the way, Virginia Roberts won that lawsuit because she was able to prove that Ghislaine Maxwell did actually say those things and that she did not defame her name. So that was the outcome of that 2015-2016 lawsuit. But nevertheless, we have a somewhat continuation going on right now because um, this lawsuit has been reopened. Um, and that's what this whole unsealing saga is all about. I've made literally over about 100 videos at this point. So you guys can go check all of that stuff out. And before you watch this video, check out part one, where we already went through pages one through 37. So make sure you watch that video because um, it lays out the tenor and demeanor of Ghislaine Maxwell. She is very annoyed. She doesn't want to be here. She thinks she's above Gil uh, Virginia Roberts. She thinks she's above the lawyer. She doesn't even think that she should have to answer these ridiculous questions. <laughs> and that's the tone you get from her. And I think I did a good job of um, portraying that. Uh, although I can't sound like Ghislaine Maxwell, so it's not a very realistic representation of what she would have been like. But nevertheless, I think it's pretty good for... Um, for me. And then the final where we left off is, so your testimony today is that you don't remember meeting Miss Roberts at Mar-a-Lago. Ghislaine Maxwell says, I do not. I just want to clarify, when you read so much stuff and so much rubbish that comes out from Virginia Roberts, you don't know what's up and down. At the time I wrote this, I believe I had a memory, but as I sit here today, I do not. So so let, let's say, let's give her the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, sure, Virginia Roberts is lying. That's her line, right? Virginia Roberts is a liar. Okay, so what the, hell, what the hell does that have to do with your own memory? Why does, if everything she says is a lie, why does that, inter, uh, why does that interject or interrupt with your own memory? Because you're telling the truth, right, uh, Gilling? Okay, just because, let's say she is a liar. If she's a liar, what does, ha what does, what does that have to do with your own memory? Why, why do you care if she's spreading rubbish? You were there, you met her, you brought her to Epstein. So she's trying to blame, she's trying to turn the blame onto Virginia Roberts and completely absolve herself of any kind of wrongdoing. And the, the fact that she's unwilling to tell the truth, she's just blaming Virginia Roberts for everything. So here we go. Now we get to page 37. Let's get to today's stuff. So now we're done with the uh, Virginia Roberts stuff. We're moving on to a second victim, uh, a second a second redacted uh, minor here, okay? Miss Maxwell, when did you first meet blank, redacted minor? Uh, answer, I have no idea when I met her. Do you know how old she was when you met her? Answer, I have no idea how old she was when I met her. Question, is it possible she was 13 years old when you first met her? And then there's an answer, but it's partly redacted. Uh, redacted may have been in the house when Jeffrey was in the house. I have no idea how old she was. Question. I understand redacted. And then I'm asking if redacted was 13 years old when you first met her. Answer. Maxwell. I have no idea. Question. Was she under 18 when you first met her? Answer, I have no idea how old she was when I met her. Question, did, did she look like a child when you met her? Answer, I don't remember what she looked like at the time she was in the house. Question, how many years have you known her? Answer, I can only recall the last time I saw her. Question, when was the first time you met her? Answer, again, I just told you I don't recall the first time I met her. Did Redacted Minor travel with you on Jeffrey's planes? Answer, I wouldn't know if she, I'm just going to say she, was on the plane or not. Did you ever have sex with Redacted Minor? Answer, no. Question, did you ever observe Jeffrey having sex with Redacted Minor? Answer, no. Were you aware that Jeffrey was having sexual contact with Redacted Minor when she was 13 years old? Answer, I find, I would be very shocked and surprised if that were true. Question, were you in the house when Redacted Minor was in the house in a private area with Jeffrey Epstein? Answer, can you repeat the question? Once again, she didn't hear the question. Question, were you ever in the Palm Beach house when Jeffrey Epstein was in the house with Redacted Minor? Answer, I've already testified that I have met her and that she was there. 
I don't understand what your question is asking. Question, so you have never seen redacted minor. And then there's a whole, there's a whole line that's redacted here, so I don't know what they said. Question, is that your testimony? Answer, I already said I don't recall all the times I've seen her, and I have no memory of that. Question, have you ever seen redacted minor in the house with Jeffrey Epstein redacted? Answer, I just told you I don't recall seeing her. Question, were you involved in an orgy with redacted minor? Answer, no, absolutely not. So finally, we're getting some straight answers. I appreciate that, although they can be straight answers that are lies. Um, I'm not sure exactly who the redacted minor here is. I'll have a couple of guesses, but I can't say for sure because I don't know exactly what um, time period they're talking about. This could be in the 90s, 2000s. If it's in the late, if it's in the later 2000s, that like, because she was with him until 2009. And if it was towards that time, then it could be um, Johanna Yoberg. Um, but I can't say for sure. That's the only guess I would have. But there are so many uh, Jane Doe's as well. So we don't know exactly um, who she's talking about. Then there are some unnamed Jane Doe's as well. So it's not just, no, you know, Virginia Roberts and the crew, Ransom and everybody else. But there are a lot of girls who haven't come out. So we can't say for sure. So let's keep on going here. Can you tell me, do you know an individual named blank uh, or redacted? Answer, I do. Question, how did you meet redacted person. At some point, she was a friend of Jeffrey's and I recall meeting her at some point. At some point. Very specific. Question. Did you hire her? Answer. First of all, I don't hire girls like that. So let's be clear. I already testified to that and I have no idea what you're referring to. So she's pretending like she doesn't recruit girls. That's what, that's her whole lines. I have no idea what she's referring to. That's what she just said. She's trying to basically shift all the blame to Jeffrey and say, hey, 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 I might have scouted these girls out, but he's the one who hired her, hired them. That's what she said in the last part, right? I never filled out the employment contract, so I didn't hire them. Despite the fact that she was, you know, prowling around in schools and spas, uh, hunting girls, she completely makes that sound like a professional thing. Oh, what do you mean, bro? I was just having massages, bro. I was just having massages. I didn't hire them. I didn't hire them. I didn't fill out the paperwork. I didn't hire them. She's trying to completely absolve herself from any wrongdoing in this whole saga. And she's, and by the way, you guys, as, as we go through this, you guys are going to see that she thinks Jeffrey Epstein is 100% innocent. Not kidding. She doesn't believe that Jeffrey Epstein ever had a non a non-consensual or, or, you know, wrong sexual interaction with a minor. She doesn't even believe that. I was, I mean, I, I thought she would, she was, you know, willing to accept reality when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein, but she's not. She still holds that Jeffrey Epstein is completely innocent, that she, he, should have, he should have never been charged even back in Florida. He, he, she thinks that she is, he is 100% innocent and she did nothing wrong. She believes every single girl that's come out against Jeffrey Epstein is a liar. I'm, that's not even my words. I read through this before, I, before I'm reading it to you guys. And that's what she believes. And we'll get to that probably in like part three or maybe in this video. It depends on how long I want to uh, want to make this video. But you, you're going to see it, okay, in part three uh, or, or maybe even in this part. I don't remember exactly where it is in the transcript, but I read through it. And she believes that Jeffrey, she doesn't believe that Jeffrey Epstein did anything wrong. So this is the mindset that Ghislaine Maxwell has, okay? Now, granted, this is in 2016 when he hasn't technically been charged, at least with federal crimes. So, but still, he was charged. He was found guilty in 2000 uh, in Florida in 2007, 2008. So we already know he's guilty. But she doesn't want to admit that he, that he is. He's st she's still holding out hope that he's innocent, or she believes that um, he's innocent, or she thinks that what he did wasn't really a crime. That's pro that's another explanation. Okay, I think it's very likely as well. When you say girls like that, what do you mean? So let's let's cover this again. So she answers, first of all, I don't hire girls like that. So let's be clear. I already testified to that and I have no idea what you're referring to. McCauley, when you say girls like that, what do you mean? Gillian Maxwell, I hire people who are professionals at the house. You are asking if I hired somebody to do what? I don't know what you're talking about. I hired people to work in the homes. Question, what was Nadia Marcinkova doing? Answer, I have no idea what Nadia Marcinkova was doing. I didn't hire her and I don't know what you're referring to. So once again, new phone, who dis? I have no idea what you're talking about, okay? <laughs> Question, you met Nadia Marcinkova? Answer, I testified I did. Question, did she work for Jeffrey Epstein? Answer, I have no idea what she did. 
that's Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, Macaulay, have you flown on planes with Nadia Marcinkova? Ghislaine Maxwell, I don't recollect it. I don't know if I did. So she just said there that she doesn't recall flying with Nadia Marcinkova. Well, we know that Nadia Marcinkova was actually a, a pilot for Jeffrey Epstein. So there's no way she didn't fly with them. Now, I looked at some of the, the flight logs, which I've had for a long time, as you guys can see on the screen. And there are many, obviously, there are many times when Virginia Roberts and Gillian Maxwell were on the same flight. As you guys can see, I highlighted one of the instances. I looked through this. I could not find one where Nadia Marcinkova was in the same plane with Gillian Maxwell, but I can't read some of this stuff. There's it's like chicken scratch. I can't read any of this. I can barely read. I can only read J E and G M here. There and and she might have been one in one of these. But we know for a fact that Jeffrey Epstein used Maria, uh, Nadia Marcinkova as a pilot. And there's no way that Ghislaine Maxwell wasn't on at least one plane with Nadia Marcinkova. Okay, so. It's very likely um, that she was on a plane, but it is also possible that you don't remember all the pilots um, that were on your plane. I mean, I've flown on planes before. I never even seen the pilot, but nevertheless, this is different though because their planes are private and um, and they're small planes, and you can see the pilot. So it's not it's not the same as uh, fly flying on a commercial plane. So we can't apply our standards, our regular peasant standards to these, you know, uh, shiny, wealthy elites here. So let's keep going on. How many times have you flown on Jeffrey Epstein's plane? That's a freaking lot. <laughs> um, six, too many times. Fair enough, okay? Uh, McCauley, more than 300. Maxwell, I really couldn't tell you how many. That's fair because it's a lot. Question, more than 400? Uh, Maxwell, again, I said I cannot tell you how many times. It's a lot. Um, this is a stupid question because she's flown so many times. That's actually the only time she's actually telling the truth here because I don't I don't even know. Um, I don't know if anybody could even count because we don't even have all the flight logs. So nobody could say for sure, but it's definitely more than 400. Question, she was with him. She would work for him from, when was it? From the early 1990s all the way to 2009. And then they were talking even after that. So um, yeah, it's a lot, okay? Question, next question, McCauley, how many times with a redacted minor or somebody redacted, I don't know if it's a minor. Answer, I already testified, I have no idea. How old was redacted person when she first became involved with Jeffrey Epstein? Answer, I have no idea. Question, was she 14? Answer, I have no idea. Question, did, you, did she look like a child the first time you met her? Answer, I don't know what you mean if she looked like a child. McCauley, did she look like she was under the age of 18? Uh, Maxwell, no. Question, did she look like she was under the age of 16? Answer, I just testified, first of all, I couldn't tell you how old she was. She didn't look like a child. Leave it at that. McCauley, did you know that she was a child? Maxwell, I just answered, I did not know how old she was and she looked like an adult. McCauley, in the times that you traveled with her on Jeffrey Epstein's plane, did you ever ask her how old she was? Maxwell, first of all, I don't know I was on many flights with her. You are making stories up again, as usual. And secondly, if I was on a flight with her, there would, there would, be, there would not be any reason why I would ask her how old she was. McCauley, you don't recollect having any conversation with her about her age? Answer, I already testified to that. See, she always says this stuff like this. I already testified because she's so arrogant and her arrogance oozes out of every inch of her. She doesn't just want to say no. J just say fucking no and move on. But she can't do that. God damn it. This, all this evasion pisses me off, man. Macaulay, do you know what hire, uh, a redacted person was hired to do for Jeffrey Epstein? Maxwell, I already testified. I didn't know she was hired. And I don't know that she did anything. I don't know how to answer that question. She, uh, you, she doesn't speak English. She's like, um, you know, some immigrant from Europe. She doesn't understand English. I, I can't answer any questions, bro. I don't know what female means. Um, I don't know what um, a recruit means. I don't know what any of these, I don't speak English. Uh, new phone, who dis? <laughs> this is her, this is her whole line of argument. I don't know. I don't understand questions. I don't understand questions, bro. English is not even my first language. I was born in France. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? <laughs> She is hilarious. I want to say the I want to see the videotape for this. That's what I want to see. Okay, that would have been awesome. Question: Was redacted person at the house, the Palm Beach house, when you were present at the house at that house? 
Answer, I have no recollection of her being at the house at the same time as me. Question, when did you first meet redacted person? Answer, I already told you I don't recall. Question, do you recall anything about redacted person? Answer, that she was tall and blonde. That's what Maxwell says. Question, McCauley, do you recall redacted person interacting with other females at the house? Answer, Maxwell, no, I do not. Question, did you arrange to get a visa for redacted person to come into this country? Answer, absolutely not. Now, see, up until this point, I was kind of guessing that this redacted person was uh, Johanna Yoberg, but um, Johanna Yoberg was not blonde and tall. Well, she was kind of tall. She's Swedish, but nevertheless, she had, uh, you know, brunette hair. So this this might be this might be a couple of people. Um, I mean, I can take a guess, but there's no uh, real point here. There are so many blondes, so you can't really narrow it down. Um, but nevertheless, I have no idea who this redacted person. I had a couple of guesses, but as, as I but as I read through this, they were all disproven by some of the details that were given. So I have no idea who this redacted person is. And I know there are some people claiming that they unredacted these redactions. I don't believe any of that stuff. Um, there, you can fake unredact stuff and like just put in names there, uh, put in some uh, guesses. But uh, I wouldn't believe anything that's unredacted by you know Slate and other newspapers like that. I just don't believe them. They're just putting in names of who they think. They're just it's just, just a guess, okay? Unless you can literally show me video. Um, screenshotted video of you unsealing the name and show me your technique, I'm not going to believe you, okay? So everybody who says they unredacted these documents, I believe is a liar, unless they can prove me otherwise by showing me video of their process of unredacting these names. So I just want to make that clear, and you guys shouldn't fall for that either because it's a bunch of lies, okay? Moving on, question, McCauley. Do you recall a redacted, a redacted person, we don't even know if this is a minor, redacted person, the first person we were talking about uh, like a couple of pages ago in 37, that 38 uh, was a redacted, uh, was a minor, but this person might not be a minor. Who knows? It's somebody who worked for Jeffrey Epstein. Um, and I've, I'm all out of guesses. Okay. Uh, do you recall redacted person interacting with other females at the house? Answer. No, I do not. Question. Did you arrange to get a visa for redacted person to come into this country? She says, absolutely not. Maxwell. Next question, did Jeffrey arrange for a visa for redacted person? The Gillian Maxwell lawyer interrupts and then Gillian Maxwell asks, what was the question again? The question was, did Jeffrey arrange for a visa for the redacted person, the tall and blonde girl that we discussed before? Maxwell, I don't know what Jeffrey did. I cannot testify to what Jeffrey did. Okay. Was she involved in sex with Jeffrey and other girls? I think she's trying to um, get at the pool parties that were allegedly taking place that I've made a video about in my uh, series called The Undisputed Evidence Against Ghislaine Maxwell. That's part four, where we talked about um, Juan Alessi, who testified to these parties that went on. So you guys could, should check out that video if you want to know more information. But I think that's what McCallie is trying to get at here. Question, was... Was this person involved in sex with Jeffrey and other girls? Another question, girls under the age of 18. Answer, I have no idea. That's Maxwell. Question, McCauley, was she involved with sex with Jeffrey and other girls over the age of 18? Answer, I have no idea. Question, did she, I'm just going to say she even though it's redacted, did she recruit other girls for sex with Jeffrey Epstein? Answer, I have no idea. Question, did you still talk to her, the redacted person? Maxwell, no. Question, the entire question is redacted for some reason. Answer, I have no idea. Another redaction, I have no idea what they were saying there. Question, are you a pilot? Ghislaine Maxwell, I am. Question, have you ever flown with redacted person? Answer, I have. Have you flown with another redacted person? What do you mean by flown? Question, McCauley, have you ever been on planes with her? Answer, I have already testified I don't recall having her on a plane with me. Do you know redacted person, another redacted person? Answer, I do. When did you first meet her? Answer, I don't recall exact dates. McCauley, did you meet her with the purpose of hiring her to work for Jeffrey Epstein or having Jeffrey hire her? Answer, no. 
finally some direct answers. Quite, they might be lies, but at least they're, they're direct answers. And she's speaking English much better, better than the last time. I lost my freaking mind in the last video because I already have a tough time reading uh, stuff. I can't read out loud that well. And when there's bad grammar, I mess up even more. It took me like two or three hours to record the last video. It was so annoying because all the grammatical mistakes were tripping me up. That's why I was losing my mind in that last video. And I apologize if I offended anybody. But yeah, it's really annoying when people, it's either Gillian Maxwell doesn't speak English properly or the person who was typing these transcripts was a freaking moron who didn't know how to properly um, type a sentence or, you know, use proper grammar. So it's either one of those things. I, I don't know which one it is. But um, yeah. Anyway, so let's keep going. Question. What was her relationship with Jeffrey? Answer. I don't exactly know the nature of her relationship, but she worked for him. So we don't know who the hell she's talking about it could be um many different people i don't know exactly who the redacted people are but my guesses would be um it's may could it could be my guess is it could be adriana ross or leslie groff these are not people who are named in uh this deposition sarah sarah kellen is already you know her name's not going to be redacted and nadia mercinko we already saw her name so she's not redacted either but um it could be adriana ross or leslie groff those are some guesses that i would have but again i have no idea um if that's if that's who it is i don't know i can't really say for sure again it could also be johanna yoberg i don't think she's named in any of this stuff um, maybe she will be, who knows? Okay. So I don't know. I can't say for sure who the redacted people are. I'm sure there's some people in the comment section who are convinced they know. Um, but I, I would seriously doubt that anybody knows for sure. But anyways, let's keep going here. I don't know the exact nature of the relationship. What did she do for him at? So next question, what did she do? For Jeffrey Epstein. Answer. At the time she was with him, I believe she traveled with him and helped with his travel arrangements. Question. McCauley. Did she bring girls to the house to give massages to Jeffrey? Answer. I don't know what she did. Question. So you never observed her, the redacted person, bring girls to the home to give massages to Jeffrey? Answer. I don't understand the question. What do you mean by bring? So she doesn't understand what the word female means. She doesn't understand what the word recruit means. She doesn't understand what the word bring means. It's very clear. You bring somebody, you, you, you know, move alongside of them and bring them to the house to give massages to Jeffrey Epstein. This is not complicated, guys. Bring is not a legal term. Okay. Bring is not a legal uh, term. There's no obscurity. We, everybody knows what bring means, but she, she doesn't want to answer the question. So this is what tells me that she's a liar because she's dancing around the words here, trying to break down the words. Now, so McCauley goes on to explain, McCauley, did you ever observe the redacted person inviting, bringing, walking anybody into the home to give a massage to Jeffrey. So she broke it down exactly how I would. You, you walk alongside somebody, that's bringing them, okay? <laughs> Hilarious. Answer, I don't recollect anything like that. That's what Maxwell says. Uh, McCauley, are you aware that, you know, redacted person was a co-conspirator named as a co-conspirator in the case involving Jeffrey Epstein? So that's what... That's what. Um, that's why I said it might have might have been Groff or Ross, because um, I think they were considered co-conspirators, but they got a immunity from uh, the 2000, 2007, 2008 deal in um, in Florida. But it could be somebody else too. There are so many co-conspirators. I've lost track now. Okay, and I don't really know what they mean by co-conspirator here. I don't know what she means. I should say by co-conspirator um, exactly, because. Now that's a word you can quibble over, co-conspirator. But does she does Ghislaine Maxwell ask, what do you what do you mean by co-conspirator, bro? No, she doesn't ask that. But she does, she is, you know, dumbfounded by the word bring. Co-conspirator, totally fine. I understand what that means. That's actually a legal term that can be uh that can me have many meanings, but bring, she doesn't understand the word bring. Co-conspirator? Oh, she understands that. <laughs> Answer. Uh let's start again. Are you aware that the redacted person was a co-conspirator, named as a co-conspirator in the case involving Jeffrey Epstein. Gillian Maxwell, I am aware. Finally, a positive answer. Question, who paid redacted person? Answer, I have no idea. Question, did you ever arrange payment for any of the employees at the home? Answer, Maxwell, what do you mean by arrange? So bring, arrange, female, recruit, 
doesn't speak English. Okay. Um, question, were you ever in charge or responsible for paying individuals at the home that work there? Okay. Ghislaine Maxwell, people had salaries and they were paid by the office. I don't think she handled accounting. I don't think that because Jeffrey Epstein had accountants of his own. So I think we can absolve uh, Ghislaine Maxwell of this. I think she definitely brought people, girls and other people to Jeffrey. Um, it might be actually true that she didn't actually do the hiring process. She's being very technical here. OK, she's like, well, what do you mean, bro? I, I brought I might have brought them to the house, but I never I never, you know, uh, did the accounting work for them. I never signed the employment contract for them, so I didn't hire them. She's being very technical. She's being very dodgy, but she's the one who brought all these girls and these other workers who are not girls, who are like contractors, you know, building uh, uh, people who are working on the buildings in the house, she brought all those people to Jeffrey because Jeffrey wanted she Jeffrey wanted to have servants basically. And Gilay Maxwell was like a what well, sir, she she served many purposes, but she would also serve uh, the role of a servant. Almost everybody who worked for Jeffrey Epstein, even the people he liked, whatever that means, were all servants. He saw himself above everybody. So yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna go down that road. Let's keep going here. <clears throat> Did you ever pay an individual? Did you ever hand an individual cash for work they performed? Good question. Maxwell, can you be more specific uh, about what you are asking me? <laughs> it's um, It seems like a very direct question. Did you ever hand checks out to people? She can't answer it. That's That means the answer is yes. Okay. She, cause she, she definitely paid these girls the $200, $200 just like Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein did after these massages for sure. So that's why she doesn't, you know, she's, she doesn't, she doesn't know how to answer this. Did you ever hand any individual? So this is McCauley clarifying. Did you ever hand any, any individual who was working at the home cash as payment for something they performed at the home? So McCauley is being very uh, clear about this. I'm rating it like a third grader because Gila and Maxwell doesn't understand English. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm repeating this uh, as I think uh, McCauley was talking to the, her because all of a sudden, Mrs. British socialite doesn't know how to speak English or understand English properly. Answer, to the best of my recollection, there were very few times where I would leave some cash for people for work performed. So that's a yes, okay? But she's saying it's a very few times, bro. I didn't do it that much. Question, and what type of work was being performed where you would be doing that, meaning leaving checks for people? Answer, if I left cash for the pool guy, uh, would have left potentially some ca cash for the gardener, potentially for exercise instructors, and sometimes for massage therapy. That's a www.yes.com, okay? That's a yes. I gave, I left $200 for the girls sometimes. Sometimes, because Jeffrey Epstein, to be fair, is the one who mainly paid them. Um, he would leave money on uh, the table after one of these um, massage sla slash sexual assault sessions took place and the girls would run out of the room with $200, okay? So we already have um, testimony to that effect. <clears throat> Question, how much were the massage therapists paid? There here comes the $200 number. Answer, they were paid between $100 and $200. Once again, verifying everything the girls have said. Question, McCauley, did it vary based on what sexual acts they performed? <laughs> she, she put in sexual acts there. He, she's not going to confirm that there were any sexual acts. She's already said the, the massages were not sexual. So she's not going to go down the sexual um, road here. She's going to just keep denying it. Answered, no, it varied depending on how much time some massage therapists charge more and some charge less. So very vague and generalized answer there. Question, did the massage therapists that were hired to come to the home perform sexual acts for Jeffrey Epstein? Here we go. Answer, what are you asking me? It's very clear, it seems, but she's, again, she's very tripped up by all these questions. She doesn't, she just doesn't comprehend any of the questions. Question, I'm asking if the massage therapist, answer, were you asking me about the underage girls? Question, I'm asking in general, did any of the massage therapists in the home, Gil and Maxwell interrupts, are you asking if they were paid for sexual acts? Uh, McCauley, I'm asking if they performed sexual acts. 
Question, did any of the massage therapists who were at the home perform sexual acts for Jeffrey Epstein? Very clear question. Answer, I don't know what you mean by sexual acts. <laughs> so that's a www.hellyes.com. Okay, that's a yes. That's a yes. So she doesn't know what female means. She doesn't know what recruit means. I've lost track of all the words that she doesn't know. Um, she doesn't know. What was the last one? Fuck, I forgot. Um, she doesn't know what sexual acts is. What do, what do you mean, bro? I, what's a sexual act, bro? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't, I don't even speak English, okay? Am I from Britain or France? Uh, maybe I speak French. I don't know. <laughs> oh, she's hilarious. God, I want to see the videotape of this question. Did any of the massage therapists who were working at the home perform sexual acts, including touching the breast, touching vaginal area, being touched while Jeffrey Epstein is masturbating, having intercourse, any of those things? And the lawyer, of course, interrupts, blah, 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 moving on. Answer, I have never seen anybody have sexual intercourse with Jeffrey, ever. So here it is. She's basically saying, I have never seen Jeffrey Epstein do a crime. So all those girls in Florida, liars. Get Virginia Roberts, of course, liar. Jeffrey Epstein's totally innocent. He's never abused a girl. He's never had sex with underage girls. I don't know, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Jeffrey's innocent. I'm innocent. All these girls are lying. That, that's her story, 100%. Alan Dershowitz style. She's just basically repeating what Alan Dershowitz says. Everybody's a liar but me. Even though Alan Dershowitz was talking about having sex with 15-year-old girls and 16-year-old girls back in the night, back in the early nine, uh, back in the 90s and in the 2000s, I think. Definitely in the 1990s. Okay, he was writing uh, essays about how the age of consent is so high in this country. 17 is too high, bro. I wanted at 16. He settled at 16. First, he was contemplating 15, Alan Dershowitz, and then he settled at 16. I have never seen anybody have sexual intercourse with Jeffrey Epstein ever. Now, this is when she starts dodging, okay? Even worse than she's been doing now. I'm not asking about sexual intercourse. I'm asking about any sexual act, touching of the breast. Did you ever see, can you read back the question? Answer, I'm not addressing any questions about consensual adult sex. If you want to talk about what the subject matter, which is defamation and lying, Virginia Roberts, that you and Virginia Roberts are participating in perpetrating her lies, I'm happy to address those. I never saw any inappropriate underage activities with Jeffrey ever. Once again, all the girls are liars. All those innocent girls who came forward in Florida, they're all liars. I've never seen Jeffrey Epstein do anything wrong with underage girls. I've never done, done anything wrong with underage girls. We are totally innocent. All the girls are liars. This is Ghislaine Maxwell's testimony. Make no mistake about it. That is the direct and indirect implications of her answer here. I have never seen anything happen with Jeffrey Epstein, despite the fact that Annie Farmer, who I believe without any, any doubt, has already stated that she and Jeffrey Epstein abused her together. Okay, so it's already on the record for me. It's a fact. If Annie Farmer says it, then it's true. And she's saying, what do you mean, bro? I have no idea. I've, I've never seen Jeffrey do anything wrong. Jeffrey Epstein didn't do anything wrong. Jeffrey Epstein is totally innocent. I'm totally innocent. We've never done anything with underage girls. This is her testimony, okay? Question. I'm not asking about underage. I'm asking about whether any of the masseuses that were at the home performed sexual acts for Jeffrey Epstein. Answer. I have just answered the question. Uh, no, you haven't. Um, I have, Ghislaine Maxwell says. McCauley, no, you haven't. <laughs> Gillian Maxwell, yes, I have. Question, you are refusing to answer the question. Maxwell, let's move on. <laughs> now she's in charge. McCauley comes in and says, I'm in charge of this deposition. I say when we move on and when we don't, you are here to respond to my questions. I'm glad she's taking control like a Viking. If you are refusing to answer, the court will bring you back for another deposition to answer these questions. Do you understand that? And then Pagluka the annoying douchebag uh, interrupts, blah, 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 question, next question, McCauley, Miss Maxwell, are you aware of any sexual acts with masseuses and Jeffrey Epstein that were non-consensual? Answer, no. Finally, a direct answer, another one. There, there are very few direct answers in this, but I'm, I'm happy when I see one because it's so tiring listening to the, this bitch go on and on and weave her lies. Question, how did you know that? 
answer. All the time that I have been in the house, I have never seen, heard, nor witnessed, nor have reported to me that any activities took place that people were in distress, either reported to me by the staff or anyone else. I base my answer based on that. Okay, so that's a very clear answer. I appreciate that, even though I think she's a giant liar. Are you familiar with the person by the name of Redacted Minor, I'm guessing? Answer, I am. Question, has Redacted Minor given a statement to the police about you performing sexual acts on her? Answer, I have not heard that. Question, has Redacted Minor given a statement to the police about Jeffrey Epstein performing sexual acts on her? Answer, I have not heard that. Oh, well, if you haven't heard it, then it must not be true, right? Jesus, she is so guilty. I'm convinced more than ever that she is guilty of everything she's been accused of, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Question, how do you know, redacted person, and then the, the answer is completely redacted for some reason. That's weird. Question, was redacted person under the age of 18? Answer, I don't recall how old redacted person was. McCauley, did she tell police that Jeffrey Epstein assaulted her sexually? Answer, I never heard that. Question, McCauley, did redacted person recruit or bring girls to the home that were under the age of 18? So I just remembered this redacted person might be Courtney Wilde, but that's just another guess. I don't know. Okay, so I wish I knew, but I understand why the redacted people, some of the victims didn't want their names coming forward. So I understand that. Um, we're still getting most of the testimony that she's saying uh, saying here. I don't, I'm not a fan of the entire sentence as being redacted, though. That's not okay. Um, but I'm sure there's a reason for that. Okay, so let's go in. Question. You can answer the question. Answer. I have no idea what um, redacted person did. Question. You never observed redacted person with girls under the age of 18 at Jeffrey's home. Answer. The answer is no. I have no idea. Question. Did you know redacted person? Answer, I did or I do. Question, what is your relationship with redacted person? Answer, uh, Maxwell, what do you mean, what is my relationship? Uh, now she doesn't know what a relationship is. <laughs> uh, McCauley, are you friendly with him or do you know him? Uh, Maxwell, he is the husband of redacted person. So, question, is redacted person one of your friends? Answer, yes. McCauley, did you ever send Virginia, Virginia Roberts, to Redacted to give him a massage? Answer, no. Gillian Maxwell answer, no, meaning she didn't send Virginia Roberts to um, give this person a massage. Did you ever instruct Virginia Roberts to have sex with Redacted? Answer, Maxwell, I have never instructed Virginia to have sex with anybody ever. So that's a blanket denial of uh, Glenn Dubin, who she also sent, according to Virginia Roberts, to have sex with or to give a massage. But um, uh, she's claiming here outright, I never did any of that. OK, question. How old was redacted person when she met Jeffrey Epstein? McCauley, was she under the age of 18? Answer. I just testified. I have no idea how old she was. McCauley, you testified she was your friend. You don't know how old she was when she met Jeffrey? Answer. That happened sometime in the 1970s. How would I know? Or in the 80s? How I have no idea. Can you testify to what your friend did 30 years ago? So she's turning the question back on McCauley here. McCauley, you didn't answer the question here, Miss Maxwell. What about blank? When did you first meet blank? I don't recall the exact date. McCauley, did you hire blank? Um, answer, I don't hire people. She came to work at the house to answer phones. So once again, this is one of the assistants. It could be uh, any of the girls that we talked about before, Groff, um, Ross, etc. Because some of them did uh, clerical work or, or secretary work for them in the houses. So there could be so many people. I have no idea. Question, McCauley, where did you meet her? Answer, I just testified I don't recall exactly when I met her, was one of your job responsibilities to interview people that would be then hired by Jeffrey? Answer, that was one of my responsibilities. So she just, she, she is averse to saying the word yes. <laughs> she has, I don't think she's ever said the word yes directly to a question here. 
except for maybe when she was denying something, maybe like two times, but most of the time she says her own sentence or she turns the question around on McCauley. She's She's been very well trained, like I said in my last video. Question, McCauley, do you recall interviewing blank? Answer, Maxwell, I don't recall the exact interview, no. McCauley, do you know what tasks blank was hired to perform? Answer, she was tasked to answer telephones. So this is, we're talking about one of the secretaries here, but there have been so many over the years, who knows, and there's so many houses, so no one can say for sure exactly who they're talking about here. Question, did you ever ask her to rub Jeffrey's feet? Answer, she was tasked to answer telephones. Question, did you ever ask her to rub Jeffrey's feet? Maxwell, I believe that I have read that, but I don't have any memory of it. McCallie, did you ever tell Blank that she would get extra money if she provided Jeffrey massages? Answer, uh, Maxwell, I was always happy to give career advice haha, to people and I think that becoming somebody in the healthcare profession, either exercise instructor or nutritionist or professional massage therapist, is an excellent job opportunity. Hourly wages are 7 8 or $9 and as a professional healthcare provider, you can uh, you can earn somewhere between, as we have established, to a 100 to 200 and to be able to travel and have a job that pays, that is a wonderful job opportunity. So in the context context of advising people for opportunities for work, it is possible that I would have said that she should explore that option. Question. Did you tell her she would get extra money if she massaged Jeffrey? Answer. I'm just saying I cannot recall the exact conversation. I give career advice and I have done that. So that's a www.ididit.com. Okay, that's a yes. Question. Did you ever have blank massage you? So another person, answer, I did. McCauley, was there sex involved? Answer, no. Question, did you ever instruct redacted person to massage another redacted person? Answer, I don't believe, I have no recollection of it. That's a yes. Question, did you ever have sexual contact with a redacted person? And then uh, her lawyer intervenes. Um, McCauley asks again, did you ever have sexual contact with a redacted person? Answer, again, she is an adult. So that's a yes, okay? Answer, she is an adult. So Maxwell says, yes, basically, she's an adult. Question, I'm asking you, did you ever have sexual contact with the redacted person? That's a woman here. Answer, I've just been instructed not to answer. So she doesn't want to, that's a yes, okay? That's a www.yes.com. Question, on what basis? Answer, you have to ask my lawyer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Question, did you ever have sexual contact with redacted person that was not consensual on blank's part, on back's, blank's behalf, basically? Maxwell, I've never had a non-consensual sex with anybody. So she's basically saying, Everybody wanted to have sex with me. Nobody ever refused. And I've never had non-consensual sex. Question. Not a redacted person. So she's asking not with whoever. Answer. I just testified I never had non-consensual sex with anybody ever. At any time, at any place, at any time with anybody. Okay. So that, that part is very clear. Although I think she's lying. But nevertheless. Her, I don't know what her definition of consent is. That's the problem here. We have no idea what Ghislaine Maxwell's definition of consent is. Question. So if blank were to testify that she did not consent to sexual acts that you participated in, and then uh, Ghislaine Maxwell jumps in, answer, I just told you I have never ever under any circumstances with anybody at any time in any place in any form had non-consensual relationships with anybody. McCauley, did you introduce... Redacted. Answer, I've again read that redacted claim that she met or that she had that she said she met blank. I don't know if I was the one who made the introduction or not. Question, that, that's probably a yes. That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, once again, she's pulling the I don't remember card. My brain is gone, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Question, do you know a female by the name of blank? Question, I do. How do you know her? Answer, completely redacted. Um, I wish we had that, but whatever. Question, so she worked for you? Answer, yes. Did, she, did you hire her? Again, Jeffrey hired people. So once again, technicalities. I didn't sign the employment papers, bro. Don't ask me. <laughs> but she brought all these people to Jeffrey. So Jeffrey signed the papers, 
because he's the one who had all the accountants, not her. So she's relying on technicalities here to absolve herself of any possible uh, wrongdoing. Question, did you ever have sex with her? The person that we were talking about that was hired. Question, was the person, redacted person, under the age of 18 when you hired her? Answer, no, I didn't hire her as I said Jeffrey did. So once again, blaming Jeffrey Epstein. McCauley, did blank ever have sex with Jeffrey? Maxwell, how would I know what somebody else did? Because it was a big house, so she had no idea what was going on. The house was so big, bro. What do you want me, what do you want me to do? I didn't know what Jeffrey Epstein was doing. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second, by the way. Question, you weren't involved in the sex between Jeffrey, redacted person, and yourself? Answer, we already, and then uh, McCauley interjects, where were, were you involved with sex between Jeffrey, redacted person, and yourself? Pagluka once again uh, interrupts, tells her not to answer. Answer, moving on. So Gillian Maxwell says, moving on. Question, so you are refusing to answer that question. Maxwell, I've been instructed by my lawyer not to answer, basically. Question, did you ever have sex with Jeffrey? Redacted minor Virginia and yourself with Virginia when Virginia was underage? Answer, absolutely not. So finally, we get a straight up den uh, denial here, which is good. And then Pagluka interrupts, say, hey, hey, bro, we've been going for about an hour. We, like, we would like to take a five minute break, please. And then McCauley says, I'm almost done. And I'm almost done, too, with this part. I've been going for like an hour now. Edited, this will probably come out to like um, 50 minutes or something. Question, McCauley, did redacted person travel with you and Jeffrey to Europe? Answer, I'm sure she did. McCauley, what is she doing today? Answer, I have no idea. McCauley, do you speak to her regularly now? Do you speak to her? Maxwell, no. Question, do you know where she lives? Answer, Maxwell, no. McCauley, do you know what country she lives in? Answer, no. McCauley, where is the last place you knew that she lived? Answer, last place I knew for sure was in Los Angeles. Question, when did she stop working for you? Answer, 2001, 2002. Question, McCauley, what tasks did she perform for you? Answer, she helped with me moving in and out of houses, construction. She was a general help. She helped with buying things that needed to be purchased if I needed her to stand in for me during a meetings. During meetings, it was a very wide-ranging job. Oh, I'm sure it was. Very wide-ranging. Question, did she ever bring females to perform massages for Jeffrey Epstein? Answer, what are you asking me? <laughs> I think it's very clear what she's asking. Question, did blank... Was it ever Blank's responsibility to bring females to the house for the purposes of massaging Jeffrey? Maxwell, Blank's job was to help me with the house and work in homes. It was not her job to, whatever you just said, bring masseuses. Uh, McCauley, did she do that? Answer, I have no recollection. I have no idea. Question, McCauley, did you pay redacted or did Jeffrey pay her? Answer, Jeffrey. Question, do you recall how much she was paid? Answer, I do not. And then McCauley says, now we can, I think we can take a break. And the videographer says, we are now off the record. So I'm actually going to cut it off here too. And then we're going to continue on with page number 68. So what can I say? Um, according to my reading of this, Ghislaine Maxwell lied multiple times here. I don't believe most of the answers that she gave. Um, I do appreciate her giving more straight answers now because in the first one, she was dodging like a ninja. Um, every single question that was being asked, she refused to give a direct answer. Here, she actually did give direct answers. I think most of the direct answers were straight up lies. But nevertheless, I do appreciate her finally giving direct answers. And there were less grammatical mistakes here uh, than the last one. So I really, really appreciate that. But anyways, I'll be making part three tomorrow. So you guys can look forward to that. And last but not least, if you appreciate all the work that I put into these videos, please join channel memberships down below. It will really help me. And also make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell and you pick all so that you get all of my videos. Otherwise, YouTube will not send you notifications. And also, you guys can support me on Patreon as well. That is the best way uh, to support my work. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, 
Peace. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and consider some of the ideas I present in my videos. If you appreciate my evidence-based, non-partisan approach to reporting legal and political news, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My long-term goal on this channel is to get to a point where I can do news analysis full-time. Grassroots funding is the best way for independent news reporters to remain uncorrupted by corporate influences. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, those dollars add up in the aggregate, and it will be much appreciated by me. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.